Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I want to welcome you to the November 4th, 2013 Morganton City Council meeting. Um, this time I'd like to um, uh, ask Forrest Fleming to lead us with our Pledge of Allegiance. Join me in the pledge. Please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. Thank you, Forrest. In the place of uh, Reverend George Logan, I'm going to call on Louis V. Nye to lead us with our invocation. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. If we could all observe a brief moment of silence, and I would like to say a, a word of invocation. Gracious God, we all here think that we know much and we accomplish much, whether we are elected officials or city employees or interested citizens. But in fact, when we are honest with ourselves, we all know we are weak and fallible human beings. We know we need guidance and direction. We ask, therefore, in all humility for your guidance for all of us and especially for those who are called upon to make decisions for this wonderful city that we all love. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Louis. Introduction of our city council. On my far right is Dr. Alfred Hamer, Mayor Pro Tem, uh, Forrest Fleming, city councilman, Louis Vina, our city attorney. I'm Mel Coyne, your mayor. Sally Sandy is our city manager. Sidney Simmons, city councilman. John Cantrell, city councilman. Kelly Russell, a recording secretary. And Becky Brinkley, interpreting for our deaf community. Uh, again, I want to welcome everyone. Got a good crowd. Um, I want to, we've had a special evening and an afternoon evening. Um, Dr. Alfred Hamer, who I have been with for 28 years, and he was here four years beyond that, for 32 years as our city council member. I want to read a resolution that I read this afternoon, but I'm going to read it again for the record. Resolution recognizing the public service of Dr. Alfred W. Hamer, Jr. Whereas Dr. Alfred W. Hamer, Jr. was first elected to the Morganton City Council to represent Council District 4 and was administered his oath of office on December 7, 1981, beginning the first of eight consecutive four-year terms uh, in that office. And whereas during his 32 years of service uh, as an elected official, Councilman Hamer was voted by every city council during that period to serve as Mayor Pro Tem under both Mayor Kessler and Mayor Cohen, and also served actively on the Finance Committee and the Personnel Committee of the City Council. And whereas, Councilman Hamer actively participated on behalf of the City of Morganton in the North Carolina League of Municipalities, the National League of Cities, and Electra Cities of North Carolina, participated in numerous training opportunities through the UNC School of Government, and was active with the Western Piedmont Council of Governments and the Regional Planning Organization for the Unifor Area. And whereas Dr. Hamer, during his 32 years on the City Council, has championed Morganton's participation in North Carolina Main Street program, been a lifelong supporter of public recreation as a cornerstone of the community, and vigorously supported the Burke County Public Library and the arts community of Morganton. And whereas Councilman Hamer was an early proponent of and one of those responsible for the initiation of city-owned cable television in the city of Morganton and has been a longtime supporter of Compass Cable. And whereas Alfred W. Hamer, Jr., so far as known, is the only person ever to have been elected by the citizens to serve on all three Morganton City Council, Burke County Board of Commissioners, and the Burke County Public School of Education, Board of Education. And whereas Dr. Hamer devoted his time and his energy to the city and to other public service, even while continuing his profession, as an obstetrician and a gynecologist, and during his long career of medical practice was a much-loved physician who has delivered thousands and thousands of babies in Burke County. And whereas Alfred W. Hamer, Jr. has been a devout and faithful member of the, for many decades of First United Methodist Church of Morganton, 
and served as the chair of the administrative board of that church. And whereas Councilman Hamer has been devoted to the city of Morganton and has exemplified all the best in a public ser as a public servant through his positive attitude, his hard work for the citizens, and his devo devotion to the improvement and progress of this great community. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the city council of the city of Morganton, sitting in regular session, that with the highest regard and esteem and on behalf of a grateful city, the council issues this resolution to honor Dr. Alfred W. Hamer, Jr., and as a token of appreciation of his service to the city. Alfred W. Hamer, Jr. is hereby awarded the title of Councilman Emeritus, together with all the honorary privileges and rights thereunto pertaining, done in the city of Morganton, North Carolina, on this, the fourth day of November 2013, and ordered and enrolled on the official records of the city of Morganton in recognition of the service of Dr. Alfred W. Hamer, Jr., Mel Coyne, Mayor, Sally Sandy, City Clerk, Make this in the form of a motion. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Doctor, <clears throat> I'm going to pass this over to you if you'll stand up with me. And tell you that sitting with Dr. Hamer all these years and uh, I just want I'm going to read just one little thing that I want to tell you all because a lot of you were not here but these are words that people told me that describe Dr. Hamer dedicated friend loves the city of Morganton a team player a gentle person a gentleman Never a harsh word, positive about city projects, loves his family, and always makes some good stories about Broughton Hospital. <laughs> anyway, th Alfred, it's been an honor and privilege for me to serve with you. I mean that. Okay, presentation of service pins. Brian Smith here. Okay, we have a, we have a 25 year pin for Brian. Mark Taubert's here. Where's Mark's pen? Um, I don't know. There we don't is. have your pen. <laughs> <laughs> I hocked it. Give me the three pens. Yeah. 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 That's all right. Okay. We'll give it's on Kelly's up. desk upstairs. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Did a lot of good tonight, Mark, but congratulations. Seriously. years for you, Mark, Man, and 30 years for you, and you are retiring at the end of the year. And um, I want to congratulate you on both counts, and then will you be sure to tell Brian Smith uh, we had one for him, and we'll get it to him? Okay? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, public advocacy issues and strategies. This has been a uh, little bit of a nerve-wracking day because of all the things that you've got to do and you're supposed to do and all that. I'm going to do a proclamation, Hunger and Homelessness Awareness Week, November 20, November 16 through 24, 2013. Joe, if you'd come by yourself up to the, uh, to the podium, and I'm going to read the uh, resolution. Make sure I'm reading the right one. Yeah. Okay. Whereas for the past several years, the National Coalition for the, uh, uh, for the Homeless and National Student Campaign Against Hunger and Homelessness has sponsored National Hunger and Homelessness Awareness Week, and the Burke County continuum of uh, care has been actively working to end hunger and homelessness in Burke County. And whereas the purpose of the proclamation is to educate the public about the many reasons people are hungry and homeless, uh, including the shortage of affordable housing in Burke County for very low income residents and to encourage support for homeless assistance service providers as well as community service opportunities for citizens, students, and school service organizations 
And whereas there are many organizations committed to sheltering, providing supportive services, as well as meals and food supplies to people experiencing homelessness, including Alpha, Burke Council on Alcoholism and Chemical Dependency, Burke County Public Schools, Burke County United Way, Burke uh, United Christian Ministries, Catawba Valley Behavioral Health Care, Christ Centered uh, Recovery Program, Easter Seals, uh, House of Refuge, North Carolina Vocational Rehabilitation Options, Partners Behavioral Health Management, the Cognitive Connection, uh, the Meeting Place Mission, the Outreach Center, Universal Mental Health, Veterans Representatives, and many more community partners. And whereas the theme of National Hunger and Homelessness Awareness Week 2013 is Bringing America Home. And whereas the Morganton City Council recognizes that hunger and homelessness uh, continue to be serious problems for many individuals and families in Burke County and the City of Morganton. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the City Council hereby proclaim National uh, November 16 through 24, 2013, as Hunger and Homelessness Awareness Week in Morganton. Be it further resolved that the Morganton City Council encourage all citizens to recognize that many people do not have housing and need support from citizens and private, public, nonprofit service entities. Adopted this the fourth day of November, Mel Cohen, Mayor, Sally Sandy, City Clerk, make this in form of motion. So, okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Joe, you're welcome to say anything you'd like. My name is Joe Marks, and, and I'm, I'm humbled to be here. Um, and, and, you know, I applaud you all for your service. Um, thank you, Mel. Uh, I applaud you for your service. Uh, it's not an easy position. Um, just like it's not an easy position, a lot of the people here um, who serve the, the hunger, and the, those that are hunger, uh, in hunger, those who are less fortunate, um, those who are in need of housing, um, we thank you for proclaiming that week. Um, and we're here to really create some awareness around um, homelessness so that we can, one person at a time, end homelessness here in Burke County. There are a couple of events that I would really like to bring everyone's attention to. One is Wednesday, which is the 20th, 2013, to really create more synergy um, with younger people. We're partnering with Western Piedmont Community College to put on a forum. Part of that forum is going to be a small play, a short play, um, and it's called um, Throwing Stones, um, written by um, one of the members of the, our con continuum. Um, and then we're having a forum where we will discuss with people who were homeless, are homeless, and, and where they are in their continuum and finding their way out. And, and it's a real powerful and impactful uh, presentation. Um, please come. You're, you're, you're definitely invited. I left some uh, flyers with Kelly, so um, pick one up um, and, and, and spread the word. And then the other is an eye care tour, which will tour the different facilities, which starts at um, Burke United Christian Ministries at 8 o'clock, and then will end at Burke United Christian Ministries at 11.30. And so if you're able to be there, please show up. And once again, uh, as humbly and as gratefully as I can say it, thank you. Joe, thank you for the work you do and the people that work with you. Thank you very much. And to go along with Joe's uh, presentation, Lee Anderson and Lisa Helton uh, of the Western Piedmont Council of Governments are going to give us a 10-year overview of the CDBG program that we... Mel, can we do the other proclamation or hospice before they do theirs? Uh, I'm sorry. But, we can if you want to. We just thought the two things okay. went well I'm together. Sorry. I'm sorry. Then go ahead. Okay, go ahead. Good evening. Uh, I wanted to give you a uh, just a real quick 10-year overview of our community development block grant program and how we have assisted the homeless through uh, some of our funding. Uh, over the past 10 years, uh, the program has uh, provided assistance to the homeless. Uh, the total investment over the past 10 years is around $650,000. Uh, and that is through our grants and nonprofits and our small business loan program. Uh, the grants and nonprofits, uh, in fact, we're awarding some of those tonight. Uh, over the past 10 years, we've had a total investment of $258,000, and we've provided funding uh, to quite a few of the people that we were mentioned in the proclamation. Uh, the Good Samaritan Clinic, uh, they provide medication, health care for low income homeless people and other just uh, low income people. The Outreach Center, 
Uh, we've helped make repairs and purchase equipment. Uh, and we also helped purchase a used uh, truck for their food program options, which is the uh, battered women's shelter. We've helped uh, with repairs to there. And they also have a transitional housing program, and we've helped fund that. Uh, the Burke United Christian Ministry, we help with their family transitional housing program. The meeting place, we've done repairs to the shelter and uh, also the house on White Street and East Meeting Street. Field Service Project, that's a, a program where, that provides handicap ramps and roof repairs to very low income people uh, and that ke helps keep them in their house so they're not homeless. Uh, the Salvation Army, we've provided funding to their rental assistance program and that helps low income people that are on the verge of homelessness. And the House of Refuge, which is an emergency shelter for men, we provided funding for that. Uh, and then through the Small Business Loan Program, since 2005, uh, the city has provided $309,000, and that creates jobs for low income people, which uh, helps people protect them from being homeless. So I'll turn it over to Lisa. Okay, Lisa kind of went through our CDBG program. I would like to uh, highlight a few other items that we have uh, assisted with over the years. Um, just a few years ago, the city partnered with the city of Greensboro to change the North Carolina building code to allow churches to provide emergency shelters for the homeless uh, during winter months. Um, we, uh, we had contacted uh, Greensboro and, and, and understood that they were having uh, some issues with the homeless, and so they partnered with us to approve uh, that amendment uh, at the state of North Carolina. We also approved zoning ordinance amendments to allow our local churches to undertake that program and to initiate when I believe uh, some of them are uh, actively participating in that. Uh, through the RDC, uh, we have participated in numerous uh, shelter projects. Uh, the Options Incorporated is one of the largest ones near here for uh, the battered women uh, shelter. The uh, city has conducted uh, design work and construction services for new sewer lines to the House of Refuge in recent years. We have worked with local charities to create a new boarding house situation for the homeless uh, along White Street. Um, we had to change some of our zoning rules to allow that to take place, so uh, uh, we've been trying to, to get our rules and guidelines in, in place to, to help be a... Uh, uh, an assistance, not not a hindrance. Uh, we have participated with Habitat for Human with uh, with Habitat for Humanity. Uh, we're currently doing some work uh, for water and sewer into their new 15 lot subdivision. Uh, it's out along Petite Road, um, and that work uh, progresses. Uh, the city has worked with the Mission Station numerous times through its public works programs and other uh, departments to help assist uh, as they need uh, assistance in their facilities. The city provides uh, building permit fee reductions and complete fee waivers under certain conditions uh, to nonprofits and to contractors that undertake projects that uh, assist low and moderate income populations and the homeless projects in our community. If uh, we encourage the contracting community, if they donate services, then we donate permits to that, uh, uh, to that project. Uh, the city has also participated with numerous developers and nonprofits uh, and with Burke County to build additional uh, housing for low and moderate income individuals through the North Carolina Housing Finance Agency. Some of these are just Millside Manor, uh, the Willows Apartments, Willow Run Apartments, and most recently Glenwood Hills. Uh, finally, the, I participate, I'm an executive uh, member of the Chodo Unifor Consortium Program that brings dollars to Burke County uh, to participate in nonprofit uh, uh, projects such as the Homeless uh, Project for Options and Habitat for Humanity. Um, just within the last few years, that has brought over $300,000 to our community. So uh, if you have any questions on any of those programs or wish or, or find other programs that you'd like for us to be involved with, please do so. Thank you, Lisa and Lee. Appreciate it very much. Any questions of Lisa or Lee? Very good presentation. Thank you. <coughs> Yeah. Now, uh, Chastity, if you would come up to the podium. Um, National Hospice Palliative Care Month Proclamation. 
Whereas hospice and palliative care empower people to live as, whole, as fully as possible, surrounded and supported by family and loved ones, despite serious and life-limiting illnesses. And whereas hospice and palliative care uh, bring patients and family caregivers the highest quality care delivered by an interdisciplinary team of skilled professionals that includes uh, physicians, nurses, social workers, therapists, counselors, health aides, and spiritual care providers, and others who make the wishes of each patient and family a priority. And whereas through pain management and symptom control, caregiver training and assistance, and emotional and spiritual support, allowing patients to live fully up until the final moments, surrounded and supported by the faces of loved ones, friends, and committed caregivers. And whereas each year, hospice serves, serves uh, Save. saves, uh, Medicare more than two billion by providing solutions for physicians, care to patients, and comfort to families where anywhere at any time. And whereas every year more than 1.65 million Americans living with limited life-limiting illnesses and their families receive care from the nation's hospice programs in communities throughout the United States. And whereas more than 450,000 trained volunteers contribute 21 million hours of service to hospice program annually, and whereas hospice and palliative care uh, providers encourage all people to learn more about options of care and to share their wishes with family, loved ones, and their health care professionals. And now, therefore, be it resolved that the City of Morganton does hereby proclaim November 2013 as National Hospice Palliative Care Month and encourage citizens to increase their understanding and awareness of care at the end of life and to observe this month with appropriate activities and programs. Adopted this, the fourth day of November 2013, Mel Coyne Mayor, Sally Sandy, City Clerk. I'll make this in the form of a motion. Sure, sir. All in favor say aye. Aye. You're welcome to say anything you'd like. I, will, I would like to thank you each for the proclamation. Um, as a native of Burke County growing up here, in fact, Dr. Hamer delivered me, so it's, it's a huge <laughs> honor for me to be here, particularly in, in your presence tonight. We are very fortunate to have a fabulous hospice program here in our county for 30 years, a nonprofit um, organization that is there really when families need us the most. And um, part of our challenge is, is educating that hospice isn't about death, it's about living and to make each day count. And one of the things that I've learned is it's the small things in life that make the difference. It's the patient that told me um, that he wanted yellow cake with chocolate frosting, <laughs> that that was his favorite. Or the patient who saw his wife, he has Alzheimer's, and I was talking with him, and he was kind of all over the place, but looking down the hallway, he focused, and he saw his wife. He said, that's my wife. And we're very privileged to be able to take care of our neighbors and our friends during that time of life that we all need to rally around one another and support each other, not only the individual but also the patient. And so it's certainly our privilege. I um, would also like to share with you a couple of things that are upcoming for us for the month of November. We celebrate National Hospice Awareness Month. And um, the first is that we feel like one of the biggest gifts that you can give your family is to have advanced directives. And so we will be hosting uh, what we call The Gift, a presentation open to the community on November the 19th. We will have our social workers there so they can help with the paperwork. We want to go over the importance of having that living will, that health care power of attorney, whether or not you choose to have a DNR, because it's all about how you live while we're here. Also want to share with you that Hamilton Williams, who's just opened up a new studio here in Morganton in honor of National Hospice Awareness Month, he will be donating 10% of yourself when you come into his gallery and you mentioned that you're there with Burke Hospice. Um, not only will you receive a 10% discount, he's then going to turn around and donate 10% back to Burke Hospice. So I think that's very generous and we'd like to share that with you. And then one last thing, we've started a new program called We Honor Vets. Um, and certainly next Monday with Veterans Day, we will have several celebrations. 
one in our inpatient unit that if you've never been there, I encourage you to come. It's a beautiful, beautiful facility that has been sponsored because of, of the giving hearts of our community. And um, so we will have a celebration and special pinning of our patients who are veterans. And then we will also have another presentation at Grace Ridge um, on the 11th at 3 o'clock. So thank you for allowing us to serve you. Thank you, Ms. Thank P you. Appreciate it very much. Thank you a lot. Okay. Um, let's see. Water, t you want a water tank update, Brad? Thank you for allowing me to take some time to talk tonight. Just wanted to give everybody an update on our water tank maintenance project. Um, it's where we're making a, a renewed investment in some of our most important infrastructure assets of the city, our, our elevated storage tanks that hold our drinking water for the city. You all approved $283,000 for fiscal year 2013 and 14, where we've contracted just a little over $217,000 of that with Utility Services Group. And they're an industry leader in water tank maintenance, where they're core business is actually the asset management of the water tank. So I'm pretty excited about this partnership because the program is part of our long-term commitment to water quality for the city. And having utility services as a partner ensuring that the maintenance issues of our water tank infrastructure are taken care of, that allows us to focus on our core business, which is treating the water and delivering it through our, our piping infrastructure. We have 11 tanks in the city. Um, this year we've targeted our five tanks that have the most critical need for repairs and refurbishment. The Piney Road tanks, there's two of them. Uh, Piney Road is up off of Playmore Beach Road in, in Caldwell County. Both of those tanks are completed now. Uh, the Oak Hill tank, which is up off of 181 in Oak Hill, uh, that one is completed as well. The Astro Drive tank, which is off of Salem Road, that one is offline as we speak and it is being refurbished and should be completed in another two weeks. After that, Astro Drive tank is completed. The Grandview tank, which is up off of Frank Wisnett Road, that one will be scheduled later on in November. These, this project started at about the end of August, so we've knocked out three tanks here. Most of the tanks take between two and three weeks. Uh, the Oak Hill tank took a little longer, about six weeks, because it had some issues with some of the old coating that needed to be removed and disposed of properly. All of our tanks are going to go through a complete interior and exterior renovation. Uh, interior renovation is going to be, be we're going to drain the tank, uh, remove all the old paint and debris that's within the tank. We're going to have two coats of epoxy paint applied to the interior. It's going to be cleaned, washed out, inspected for state approval and it's going to be disinfected before we turn it into or put it back into service. The exterior renovation is going to consist of being pressure washed, hand and power tooled. A lot of the corrosions that's on the outside of the, the tank needs to be tooled down to bare metal. Uh, it's going to be epoxy primed and have a top coat applied and a polyurethane gloss coat to really make it pop. It's going to be a nice addition to the city when we have all the tanks done. This is the Piney, the first Piney Road tank. Uh, you can see by this is an older picture. Uh, there's lo definitely a lot of chalking. You can tell that the coating is starting to break down. It doesn't have the gloss that it once had. You can see this is the inside of the tank after it was drained. You can see the su support structure has quite a bit of corrosion. Um, if and if a, lot, a lot of the paint is starting to come off, this can lead to water quality issues if 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 uh, left unattended after a while. There's the finished product. It's a nice, glossy, brand new, uh, tight tank. Uh, the coating is very tight. Uh, it's um, it's going to hold up for several years if we if we maintain it properly. There's a the same almost the same view internally now. Um, it was clean enough that you could eat off of. I mean, it was it was amazing to be inside that tank uh, prior to them cleaning it and, and washing it out. It's uh, it's really something. The water quality in these tanks is going to be uh, greatly enhanced. There's the second piney tank, similar condition. You can see some of the support structures definitely showing a breakdown in the coating and a lot of corrosion. There's the exterior now. And again, it's the 
the same support structure, and it, it really looks great. There's the Oak Hill tank before renovation. You can see I did not take these pictures on top of the tank. They were done by utility services. You can really see there's a breakdown in the coating. Uh, there's a lot of corrosion, rust. Uh, if you leave this unattended, it uh, can, can really cause some, some issues where you have to uh, do a lot of metal refurbishment, which can be very expensive. There's the tank today. Yeah, it looks great. It's... Uh, it's, it's really nice to just drive up through Oak Hill and see that tank. It really stands out. The, that's the, almost the exact same shot where now you see that nice, tight, glossy coating. And it's, uh, again, it's, uh, we, we expect to get 15 to 20 years of life without any uh, refurbishment on this. So it's, it's a definite investment. It's uh, you, the dollars that you approve going to work. This is probably going to be washed out a little bit, but that's the overflow piping inside the Oak Hill tank. Um, again, <clears throat> it's uh, definitely a tight interior coating, which is going to really provide for some good water quality in our community. Thank you for your time. Brad, tell us a little bit about where you are with the West Union, I guess you call it Mountain View. Mountain View Street. Mountain View tank? <clears throat> um, there's, the contractor is supposed to be starting the demolition of that tank later this week, if, if at the latest, probably the middle of next week. I haven't heard back from them. But um, once uh, we have our all of the communities, we have Riverside, um, Mountain View Tank, Davis Drive, all the surrounding folks in there have been contacted personally by some of my staff to let them know that they're probably going to have some, some noise in the area because they are going to be cutting that tank down and dropping the pieces down inside the tank so there's going to be some noise so we've done a pretty good job of letting all the customers know that that's going to be happening uh, and as soon as we have a firm uh, date when they're going to start that we're, we plan to do a press release and let everybody know super thank you thank you so much thank you Brad Sharon Jablonski well I don't have any pretty pictures <laughs> <laughs> Um, switching for gears for just a minute, we, first of all, just coming off a very successful Halloween. As usual, about 3,000 kids downtown. Uh, it was full. There was over 40 businesses that handed out candy, and uh, the courthouse was absolutely packed. Uh, Journey Church, I have to mention, brought in like six bounces, houses, and they were slammed, so it was a great um, holiday event. And as you can see through the seasons today, obviously it's much cooler today, and we're preparing for the whole um, uh, if you will, cool air and, and Thanksgiving and Christmas and Hanukkah and every other event that comes up for the next two months. So our office is, is, is full, and I want to make you aware of a couple of things. Saturday, November 23rd is, of course, our day to kick off the entire holiday season, and there's three events happening that day. The first one is the Winter Carnival, which was formerly known as the Festival of Lights. It will be held Saturday again, November 23rd, from 1 to 6 p.m. As is tradition, the historic courthouse square is turned into a winter <coughs> playland, and it features all free activities and all free rides. The uh, carriage rides, they bring out three carriage rides that we run all day long and cannot run them fast enough. Uh, we have the train rides. There's visits with Mr. Santa, uh, excuse me, Santa and Mr. Claus, <coughs> and even our local post office staffs the uh, letters to Santa tent, and they uh, respond to all of those. The, um, they help uh, Santa out. We have a beanbag toss, putt putt, and Elves Craft Shop, thanks to our new Walmart Center. Uh, we have had several different businesses from the Walmart area, the Morgan Heights, call us and want to participate in our events downtown. And one of those is Joanne Fabric and Craft Stores, and they will actually be providing the uh, Elves Craft <coughs> Shop activities this year, as well as staffing it. Uh, of course, there will be the big bonfire and Frosty's Diner. The memorial tree lighting uh, is in its 30-plus years, Mayor, and it begins at 530. Its music is provided by the Freedom High School Chamber Singers, and then, of course, to the delight of everybody at 6 p.m., we light up the entire downtown. Um, we are taking names at this point, as we have always done for 30-some years. If you would like to remember someone or honor someone uh, with a memorial light, uh, that is a dollar, and of course those funds are split between the downtown, continuing of the downtown lights, as well as the Christmas cheer fund. 
and you can uh, mail those in or you can just simply come by City Hall uh, or to Nancy at the front desk and they have the paperwork there and will take care of you. Uh, the names will be printed in a commemorative program and the Morton News Herald who is a partner with us uh, will print all the names after that. So another event that's happening that same day is uh, the Morton Farmers Market does a holiday market. They actually do two holiday markets. One, again, is Saturday, the November 23rd date, and the second one is Saturday, December 14th. Those uh, events run from 12 to 5 each day, and they will offer fresh goods and decorations for all your various traditions throughout the whole holiday season of Thanksgiving, Christmas, Hanukkah, and more. Uh, of course, the famous tickets for Breakfast with Santa all went on sale this morning. There was a rush at the Main Street office standing out in line. Uh, those events are December 7th and December 14th. We only sell uh, two each day, and uh, they sell out fast. So give us a call, 438-5252, or uh, everything, of course, can be found on the Downtown Morton website. And if the big finale is the Morton Christmas Parade, which is Tuesday, December 3rd. Get your application in. It starts at 6 p.m. This year's theme is Christmas carols, and it is presented by the Downtown Development Association. I would also encourage you to stay in Burke County, shop the Christmas season this year. Please shop downtown Morganton and shop Morganton Heights. Where is the uh, farmer's market going to be held? I'm sorry, that's at the corner of Green and Avery Street, the ones uptown. Okay. Thank you very Thank much. You. And I would like to say following that list of the events for the holiday season and the season that we are entering, there seems to have been some confusion. There's been quite a few letters to the editor, and I don't normally respond to that in this method, but it does seem like we have a lot of confusion. There has been no action of the city council. There has been no intent of the city council to do away with Christmas to change any of the traditions re related to Christmas. Simply, the name Winter Carnival was chosen to represent the entire season, to represent more than one single holiday, and to be representative for all the events that are being planned throughout the season and handled by many partners, if you just heard Sharon explain. So I just wanted everybody who's listening, and perhaps Tyler would help us out and get something in the paper so that everyone can understand that that is all that the Winter Carnival name represents. Thank you. would like to uh, also add that I uh, thank the city council members, staff, uh, for helping with the uh, ribbon cuttings uh, galore out at the uh, Morganton Heights Shopping Center. And uh, they have gone well, and uh, the council members have participated, and some of them have had to do it when I've been gone. But uh, it is um, a, just something to behold to look at a shopping center as it came out of the ground like we got a chance to do at the end of Henry Don Road at the cul-de-sac and see what it is today. Again, thank you, council members, for supporting uh, the ribbon cuttings. Sally, Municipal Power Agency number one. Mm -hmm. We are privileged tonight to have with us Matt Scholl, who is the Vice President with Electricities and Power Agency number one, of which we are members, to present some public power awards of excellence. Yeah. Thank you, Sally. Thank you, Mayor, members of the council. Appreciate you all having me here this evening. It's truly an honor to, to be here to celebrate your success as a public power community. And as you all are well aware, uh, Electric Cities is an association of 80 plus public power communities across the state, including Morganton. And all these communities own, operate, and retain the local benefits of having their own electric systems. And beyond that, when times get tough, and the resources locally aren't enough, you all share with each other very well, especially when it comes to storms, uh, restoration of service. Uh, we have a, a program that, uh, that ships crews from one side of the state to the other in order to, to restore service as fast as possible. So we as public power enjoy the benefits of that local operation and control and, and continue to provide value for our members. So I'm here this evening to share with you uh, four awards for the, the city of Morganton to recognize your efforts as a public power community. And those are the competitive business environment, energy efficiency, uh, financial stability, and service excellence. I've got the awards here. I'll pass it around to you all if you don't mind. Okay. Uh, I'll say a few words about each one, uh, the concept, and also how you all uh, achieve that award. Uh, first of all, there's the uh, competitive business environment. As you're all well aware, 
Growth is key to our communities. So it's attraction, retention of businesses, jobs, and investment in our communities. So in this, in this area, we, we recognize um, communities for their, their efforts in the areas of economic development especially. And the two key areas that we identified for the city of Morganton include your Mission 2030 plan that focuses on developing econ you know, economic uh, incentives, uh, um, programs to have cities, or I'm sorry, for, for businesses to join the community and bring those jobs and investment locally. Uh, in addition to that, you all have a very strong key accounts program. So once you get the businesses in town, you're able to, to develop that relationship with them and provide them value service that helps them stay competitive in this, in this city. The second area of, of uh, award is in the energy efficiency area. Energy efficiency takes many forms. Uh, it's anything from helping your larger customers uh, efficiently use power uh, to save money and, and reduce their costs to the low-income uh, houses that need some help with weatherization and other things like that. So you all do a great job of communicating the benefits of, of energy efficiency and outreach to the community through your bill inserts, through your website, and, and I've actually went on and watched some of the videos as well, and those are all very helpful to remind people how they can save money on their bills by doing a few simple things around their houses. So again, uh, energy audits are also available. You, always, you make those available for, for customers free of charge, and we help you with that as well. So we, we encourage people to uh, um, take advantage of that benefit. The third award is financial stability, and financial not only from the perspective of the financials of the city, but also giving options to your customers for their ability to pay, you know, either through web or the portal or through the, the window service, or through other, other methods. And I understand you all just recently passed in July a uh, automatic bank draft ability free of charge, a wonderful benefit for the citizens of the community. Uh, in addition to that, there's Project WARM through the partnership with Burke United Christian Ministries, the ability to, to have some money withheld from people's bills at their election and help others that need some help with their electric bills. Finally, there's the Service Excellence Award. That recognizes outstanding efforts by the city to communicate with, with customers through many different means. And those include bill inserts, um, the city website looks great, very easy tool to use for your customers. Uh, and then your use of social media as well, stepping into that realm. Uh, that, that's a main way we communicate with our customers as well from Electricity's perspective. Twitter, while I may not be good at it, a lot of people are, and it's a great way to reach out to communities, especially the news uh, uh, media. And then finally, uh, you all did have uh, always celebrate Public Power Week through a booth and, and handing out the uh, electric kits to help people with energy efficiency as well. So that's another area that demonstrates service excellent for your communities. So those are the four. We congratulate you for your efforts in those four key areas and your continued success in the community, and we applaud your efforts in that area, both the council and the city staff. Congratulations on these awards. Matt, I'll tell you that... Uh Being one of 51 cities in the state of North Carolina has always made me proud to know that when it's uh, 10 degrees outside and 14 inches of snow, uh, our guys are working to make sure that our citizens are taken care of with electricity. Yes, and Electric Cities is known for that, and I greatly appreciate the work they do in Raleigh to help us. Yeah. Our pleasure. We're glad to be Thank a part you. of your operation. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you being here. Yes, sir. One thing I failed to mention to the audience uh, that are watching us live and the ones who are here tonight uh, is uh, Thursday the 7th, Morganton Heights is overall dedication service at, uh, next to Staples. It's actually a building that looks like Staples but doesn't have their name on it yet. It's in a, and it has a, a, a green area or an area that is uh, fenced off, and that's where the dedication will be. It'll be the dedication of the sculpture that the developer bought, beautiful sculpture. And that'll start at 1030 on Thursday morning. And I hope uh, all the citizens uh, will be out there to see that uh, overall dedication for the shopping center. Um, Sally, municipal power agency number one. Um, nothing other than Matt's presentation. Okay. All right. Public comment is now we uh, is. Each speaker will come forward to the lectern and begin by stating their name and address and town where they're from. Each speaker will have about three minutes to address the council. Uh, all speakers should be civil. 
Uh, they should be uh, direct all comments to the council and not to other individuals. Uh, we understand that they can be controversial issues, but we ask for everyone's cooperation to ensure the meeting continues in a respectful manner. Peace and order will be maintained at this meeting. Kelly. Um, first is Aziz Omer. <coughs> Dr. Aziz Omer, 101 Irving Dale Lane, Morganton, North Carolina. Mayor, first of all, I'd like you to know that I've been here 42 years in this town. I grew up in this town, so just so you know, I went to school all over the United States. And I still continue to live here, unlike your children and most of yours who have chosen not to live here because they can't get a job or were unable to do the things they need to do. Your own children aren't here. But uh, aside from that, Mayor, the fact that you posted things about me and my family on Facebook page is very despicable. The fact that you don't know about the 1992 Energy Act that Kirby Brooks and himself, I have a copy if you'd like it, that you posted there about the monies that the city of Morganton gave us, and that's not true. That you're an instrument. The city of Morganton is an instrument to give us money for rebates, which the city themselves have approved of mayor these are real facts i have a copy with your picture on it on facebook page you can't deny it you're a mayor you shouldn't act like a politician i've been here for 42 years i reside here i live here in morganton i've chosen morganton me and my family have grown this town significantly the city of morganton can't deny that in fact we've been commended for the fact that we have rebuilt morganton many different areas and we've grown this town and we have served this community. I may not have voted in city elections, but I did vote in the November elections for the special election. Just so I want to clarify that to you, that I do vote, and I am an activist in this town. And we, my dad has served for more than 20 years for the Good Samaritan Clinic and continues to serve, and now my wife serves there too. Just so you know that we're not here to run away from this town. We love this town. You need to understand that I want all of you to participate, not just with me, but our community. I don't feel like you've done that, but yet you post ads in the Best of Burke with my name in a negative manner. I mean, Mayor, that, that's, you know, you, you may have been, and I'm not going to say that you weren't a good mayor at some point, but, uh, you know, you t even told me personally that you love my family and me, but the facts are that you go around and then you start posting ads of best of Burke, of best elected official, in spite of what I'm saying or anybody else is saying, you know, it, it is what it is, Mayor. Um, I think you owe me an apology for what you posted on Facebook page. And uh, I've got a copy of it. In fact, it's funny how you would take it down real quick after I reported to the Attorney General. Fifteen so, seconds. Anyway, um, it is what it is. And the petition is growing, Mayor. Brooks did not show up. Mr. Banks. Kent Banks, 2260 Crestview Street, Wilmington, North Carolina. I would like for Morganton to set the example of a city that is less concerned about who is right and who is wrong and more concerned with what works effectively to take the action required to address the issues of concern of the less fortunate, voiceless people in our city, the hungry and homeless included. Burke County in general, and Morganton in particular, are becoming known for unethical, borderline corrupt, or illegal, illegal political practices by the officials who are elected to serve the public. To serve the public, not just their friends and relatives. A quote from Robert Griner of Morganton in the News Herald dated October 25, 2013, in his letter to the editor states, We the citizens must go to the ballot box in the next election and remove them as the most recent city election has proven effective when one of the longtime members of this body was removed. The recent hike in taxes, coupled with the astronomical increase in the electricity deposit to a whopping $400, which, by the way, is the highest in the nation, according to my research, I have to ask, no, I beg you, gentlemen, have you no conscience, no sense of decency, 
no compassion for your constituents who are not as affluent as you? It has been brought to my attention that Walmart is going to donate a substantial amount of money to the historic Morganton Festival, which in translation means Mayor Mel Cohen's pocket. And the citizens will not see any of this going to the benefit of the city. If this turns out to be true, we the citizens who elected you demand the proper accounting of every cent of those monies. Elected officials of this city should not be receiving kickbacks from corporations for doing the job they were elected to do. It is unethical and may even be illegal. I'd like to hear what your position is on that, Mr. Mayor. Fellow citizens, we need to think about the current and past political practices that are taking us Excuse me. Fellow citizens, we need to think about where the current and past political practices are taking us. We bring to power folks who are counterproductive to addressing all the needs of its citizenry. These public servants have, in fact, become public masters, and they like it, squandering ever vast more amounts of our tax money while leaving little hope for our children to rise above the tactics of division and realize their true potential. This permanent political class system in Morganton has got to come to an end, and the time for ending it is now. Political alliances within government and outside special interests, as well as gerrymandering of our city districts, make most incumbents re-election a foregone con conclusion. Citizens, I ask you to register to vote and come out and vote these career politicians out of office. We, the citizens, deserve better representation than we're getting, and we will not stop. Your time is up, Mr. Banks. Thank you. Diane Wickstead. Good evening, Mayor Cohen, Council Members, Ms. Sandy. Uh, my name is Diane Wickstead. I live at 109 Henry's Glen Drive here in Morganton. I relocated to Morganton from New York two years ago. And I'd just like to voice my support for what you are all doing for, for this town. In the short time that I've been here, I have visited other towns, both large and small. And I see that they don't offer half of what Morganton does in terms of theater, movies, restaurants, shops, art galleries, festivals, and so on. In fact, some of these towns look like they're on the verge of collapse. I wouldn't want to see that here, and I don't th think anybody else would either. Uh, however, in order to keep a town from becoming depressed, investment has to be made in infrastructure, services, education, and businesses. Um, I believe that you are moving the town in the right direction. Uh, the latest example, we have just seen the opening of the new Walmart Supercenter. I believe it is a positive indication that several of the stores that have opened at this, the Supercenter are new to Morganton and obviously felt that it was a wise business decision to move here. Another positive aspect of this venture is that new jobs have been created as a result of this expansion, and this will bring increased revenue to our town. So once again, I want to thank you for providing the vision and leadership in moving Morganton forward. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Wickstead. Appreciate it. There are no others. Okay. Uh, consent agenda, Sally. Okay. The consent agenda before you not tonight includes nine items. Uh, those items are considered to be non-controversial and would ask that you approve those in one motion unless there is someone in the audience that would like to have an item removed or a council member that would like to have something discussed separately. For those of you viewing at home, the items include minutes from the October 7th City Council meeting tax releases in the amount of $2,271.19, the first reading of taxicab franchises for the new year. Those will come back again in December for the second reading. The consideration of award of a piggy piggyback contract to purchase a knuckle boom loader in the amount of $121,603. That is from Public Works Equipment of Monroe. Also, a motion to award the financing of that purchase to BB&T at an interest rate of 1.48%, and that's for a three-year period. 
consideration of a budget amendment, $35,000, and that is reappropriating funds for resurfacing projects at the public safety substations, and that's for a project that has crossed two fiscal years. And then the consideration of award of a bid to replace truck 500, which is the tree trimming truck in the electric department, and that purchase is for $173,204. Also, consideration of modification of the existing no parking ordinance. This is for Woodlong uh, Drive, and this is correcting in our ordinance where it talks about no parking within a cul-de-sac. Cul-de-sac no longer exists, and so we're straightening up that language. Also, the award of bid for the Amherst Road water line relocation, and that is a project um, being done with DOT. That is at a cost of $90,245.64 and is totally reimbursable um, by the North Carolina Department of Transportation. And then finally, a resolution to designate an applicant's agent, and this is for contact with FEMA. We are working with FEMA on several grant opportunities, and that will be to assign Andy Smith as the primary contact and Mark Young as the secondary contact. Anybody wishing to take anything off the consent agenda? Seeing no one, I'll make a motion that we um, approve the consent agenda as is. Second. We have a motion. We have a second. Discussion of any item? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Uh, new business. Consideration of a grant award of an entitlement funds to nonprofits. Sally. Uh, we have Lisa here tonight to talk about another round of grants to our nonprofits. Very um, popular program in our CDBG entitlement monies. Uh, this year, uh, in our action plan, we say that we would spend $25,300 for our grants to nonprofits, uh, and staff would like to recommend the three following options. We recommend $7,085, and that is to provide some repairs to the shelter, and also they have a program where they transition the women and children out and that will help with that program also. Uh, Foothill Service Projects, we recommend $10,000. This is a program for handicap ramps and roof repairs for disabled and frail elderly low-income residents of Morgan. You have to live in the sea limits to receive the assistance. Uh, and the Salvation Army, we recommend $8,200, and this is for their homelessness avoidance program. And this also, you have to live in the sea limits of Morganton, and they will provide uh, rental assistance uh, to prevent homelessness. And these were the only three that participated in the application process. We had process. one that they had received funding the past two years in a row, so we had to. What are your wishes, Council? I move we award the fiscal year 2013 entitlement funds to nonprofits as recommended. Second. We have a motion. We have a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Uh, next item is uh, consideration of a public comment policy and public hearing policy. Sally? Louis is going to discuss. Oh, Louis, I'm sorry. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. By law, the city council is required to provide a uh, time for public comment at every uh, regularly scheduled monthly meeting of the council once a month. Uh, as I think we have all noticed uh, in the course of the year 2013, there has been frequent and often intense uh, public comment, uh, which historically is a bit of a change for Morganton uh, for the city council, which hasn't had, we've had some very heated comments at public hearings many times, but the public comment period hasn't really been that active until quite recently. Uh, therefore, it's not surprising perhaps that the city does not have an official policy or ordinance uh, governing comment uh, at the public comment times or in public hearings for that matter. This is in contrast, to, in, instead we've done it on an ad hoc basis, meeting to meeting uh, by action of the mayor or council. Many cities and towns and counties and other agencies uh, do have more formalized policies uh, concerning these matters. Therefore, city staff, uh, after consultation with members of the city council and after reviewing policies from numerous other municipalities, has drafted a proposed public comment policy. 
Uh, and there is also a separate policy to govern the conduct of public hearings, which, of course, do raise some different issues. In general, with very few exceptions, a city cannot regulate the content of what's said at uh, public comment, but is allowed to uh, govern the time, place, and manner of public comments. This policy that we're proposing tries to seek seeks to balance the importance of providing maximum open uh, public participation with the need to maintain decorum and allow the council to proceed in an orderly way with the public's business. Unless the council specifically votes otherwise for a particular meeting, the public comment period would be set at the very beginning of the council session before any other public business is conducted. It would be limited to 30 minutes in duration, and each speaker would individually would be limited to 30 minutes. Three, three, three. Uh, three minutes, excuse me, my, my mistake. These time limits are identical to those that occur in most other cities' policies. And for the board's information, I've looked through at least eight or ten different cities of various sizes, from small towns to Charlotte across North Carolina, the three minutes is almost universal, and 30 minutes for the whole period is a, is a very common uh, limitation. Likewise, it's important to remember, and the policy would state, that the time is for speakers to comment to the council, and it's not a time for council to speak to the public. Uh, therefore, the policy would limit the council's responses to, where necessary, direction for the speaker to uh, check with the appropriate uh, employee or other agency. Concerning public hearings, uh, of course, there are different issues. Uh, by statute, again, however, the council may regulate the time, place, and manner of the conduct of the public hearing, including limits on time for each speaker. Uh, because of the nature of hearings, uh, public hearings being different from public comment, council members would be free to respond or address questions to speakers. In fact, that may be very uh, there may be very active back and forth with speakers at public hearings. What you often have at public hearings, of course, is a lot of uh, con uh, public, not only public interest, but contested issues between two or more sides. And therefore, where there are uh, multiple people who want to speak or are interested, each side would be encouraged to designate spokespersons who would be allocated, if council so allowed, extra time beyond the normal three minutes. And council would also have the authority to extend the time uh, for such speakers if the nature of the hearing warranted. So we're going to start our meetings at 530. Well, that would be a separate decision. The policy doesn't address okay. that. Okay. The proposed policy. You, the many, some municipalities do that. They, they just move their start of the meeting When do we do earlier. that? Because we're going to do it next month. So that would be a decision that you could okay. take if you want to. Okay. All right. Um, any questions of Louis? We have two motions, gentlemen. I move to approve and adopt a policy governing public uh, comment uh, periods at city council meetings. Second. We have a motion. We have a second. Any discussion of that item? <clears throat> All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Second item. Motion to approve and adopt a policy governing public hearings at city council meetings. Second. Okay, we have a motion to second. Any discussion of that item? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Now, time we're going, uh, my understanding is that we possibly will start at 530, and the public comment time will be from 530 to 6. True? If that's what if you that's what so you direct us, then we will do everything. I'd like to put that in the form of a motion. Part of that time. Okay. Second. Okay, Mr. Simmons made the motion. Uh, and, and may I point yeah. out one thing? If if you do that, or whenever you do it, 30 minutes is the max allowed. Yeah. Obviously, you don't have to use the full 30 minutes. No. And if you don't, then the meeting would, uh, mm -hmm. you could take a brief recess, recess until before six. doing business. And you cut it off at, uh, you cut it off exactly at 6, so uh, Chad doesn't start the meeting until 6.01 or? Well, well now the, the public comment period has to be part of your meeting. I mean, it, you can't have okay, a separate Okay, so, okay, meeting. you open up the meeting. You've got to open you. the meeting, yes, okay. and you have gotcha. to have a quorum present and okay. all that. Okay, And And by the way, I, and I included in that, I should have said that, 
if somebody uses the full 30 minutes, and I don't think we've had 30 minutes of public comment even this year, but if, if you've run out, then people who have signed up to speak and aren't reached would be placed at the top of the list for the next meeting if they wish to come back and speak mm -hmm. then. And again, this is public comment period, not yeah. comment on items on the agenda. Correct. So, so yeah. the timeliness would yeah. still be met. Does that have to be a separate motion? We didn't address okay. that in the policy at all. Okay. All right. Um, my understanding is we will not. We will not. Uh, so you had a motion, a motion and a motion second, second, right? Yeah. And we passed that one. No. 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 Five thirty. Okay. All in favor, say aye. aye. Opposed. Okay. And that first public comment period will not be on cable. That's that's your decision. Again, yeah. the policy doesn't address that. I move that we do not have the public uh, comment on cable TV. Okay, because a lot of them don't do that. A lot of towns don't. I hear a second. Second. I have a motion. We have a second. Discussion. If I may ask clarifying, that would mean that you, you would only start your televising with the at 6 o'clock yes. when business begins. When business it begins. Does. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. All right. Uh, next item is, con Sally, consideration of award of a bid for fully equipped fire apparatus, uh, Pierce Era XT truck with 75-foot aluminum ladder. Yes, in the 2013-2014 budget, in the public safety capital budget, we have included funds to purchase um, a new fire truck, and you have just described that. Um, we have received bids on this and are actually purchasing this through a purchasing co-op with Houston Galveston in Texas, and this is an acceptable manner for us to make public purchases. Um, the, the truck and the equipment that we're asking you to purchase, the truck is $723,259, and then the equipment that will be part of that truck is $76,609 for a total of $799,868. We budgeted $800,000 for that. So we are coming in just under that budget and would ask that you approve this tonight. This price has been guaranteed to us for uh, the next couple of weeks, and it will expire if we wait until the December council meeting. We would also let you know that it's our intention in our budget. This is um, financed with an installment purchase financing, so we would bring the banking award back to you at the December 2nd meeting. Karen, are they still down there, interest rates, for you? Only for you. O only for you. Only for you. <laughs> <laughs> I move we award bid to Atlantic Emergency Solutions through the houston Galveston Area Council for the purchase of a fully equipped fire apparatus and all related accessories and attachments for the price of $799,868. Sorry. I have a motion second. Any discussion? Yes, I'd like to ask, uh, 708 is what, uh, 16 years old? So yes, it, it is the truck that, uh, 1997, that we discussed back last February at the council workshop is a truck that has always given us problems. Okay. That's as it, much as I know about it. These gentlemen can obviously tell you a lot about the issues with that truck. Is it it's going to be is it going to be taken out of service or it, it will not be taken out of service currently because it's going to take us about a year right guys to get this truck so we're going to be using it until we get a replacement the truck. replacement truck yes sir okay we have the motion we have a second Did we? okay yeah all right any other discussion all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. The last items, we're talking about your job, Sydney. We're going to expand your salaries, by the way. I'm going to raise. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> next month, 30-day um, notice for vacancies on the airport authority. We have two vacancies, uh, one citizen and one council member. And the Community House Board of Control, there are 10 vacancies. Mm. And that needs to be looked at uh, rather closely. 
Um, if you, uh, mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, that's it. Anything further from the council members? Meeting adjourned.